Yo, what's up guys? My name is Red Cloud. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to optimize Fortnite so you guys can get higher FPS, lower latency, and overall just a better experience while you're playing Fortnite. A lot of the video is going to be, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about file optimization and stuff like that. So do yourself a favor and pause the video if you guys are confused on anything. No matter how long it takes you to get through this video, just make sure that you are understanding what you're doing. That way you in the future can help other people to be able to do the same thing uh, without even referencing this video. So first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Red Cloud. I stream every day at Twitch TV slash Red Cloud. Lately, I've been playing Fortnite, so that's why I'm going to be making this video. Um, we do play Call of Duty and we are going to be playing Cold War uh, when that releases. So feel free to stop by the stream. I definitely appreciate it. And I definitely do play with my viewers and read chat all the time. All right, guys. So before we get into this video, I'd like to thank Pangino for making the folder that we're going to be working out of today. It's basically just everything that we need as well as a clean cut step-by-step um, -step instruction on how to do what we need to do today. So. Pangino, he does optimization videos for games and stuff like that. His YouTube link will be up here or down here in the description. So check him out. Definitely give him a thumbs up on all of his videos and stuff like that and subscribe to him. He's definitely the GOAT when it comes to this. The reason why I'm making this video is because we're going to be doing a cleaner cut version of his video as well as more catered towards the competitive slash like person who's got a low end PC that really wants to optimize their PC and get them mess uh just like the best amount of fps in fortnite especially if you play competitive fortnite so let's get right into it first of all uh, i'm on my desktop so let's open up this this is the folder that you guys will be downloading it's going to be in the link in the description below you have to download it because it has all the files that we need and it has programs in it that will optimize our PC in the background. All right, guys. So once we're ready to jump in, all we're going to do is we're going to download the folder that I was talking about earlier. That is in the description below. You download the folder and then you extract it with the free extractor like 7-zip. You download that and you extract it to wherever you'd like to uh, extract that to, to your desktop or to your downloads. I have it here in my FPS uh, Fortnite folder. And I'd like to thank you guys for 400 subs. Seriously, I appreciate that so much. Uh, as well as, you know, we've got a sale going on for my merch in the description below as well. So once we've done that, we'll go to the FPS folder here by um, Pange. And then we will go to the configuration file right here, the folder. So this is basically going to be talking a little bit about what we're um i guess trying to achieve here all right guys so let's open the config folder once we're in here we have three choices we can either go for a low end option which basically yields the best amount of fps so we get the most amount of fps while playing we have the high end which basically means that we are choosing to have better uh visuals but not as best of a fps boost and we have the recommended, which is a pretty good FPS boost and pretty good visuals. What I would recommend, if you guys want the most amount of performance, the least amount of lag, the least amount of input lag, and generally the best just quality of life for Fortnite, because honestly, Fortnite is just very poorly optimized right now, especially with the packet loss thing. I don't know what's up with that. It's terrible. Go with the low end. This is what I would recommend. And what we're going to be doing to get this folder into our Fortnite folder is we're going to be running um, uh, our app data or we're going to go to our app data. So we're going to hit run. We're going to type run when we press the Windows key. Hit that. And then we're going to press and type X, um, percentage app data. Okay. Press OK. And then we're going to go to our app data folder here. Go to local. Go down to Fortnite game, saved, and then we're going to go to config, Windows client, and game user settings. And this is the folder that we're going to be replacing here from his folder that he's made. So instead of the engine and scalability, because those files are not in this um, game folder anymore, we are just going to be dragging this. 
and replace file in the destination, and that's it. Once you're done that, your low end major FPS boost settings will be here. So I just wanna let you guys know before, and if you did that, if you did have stretch res or a custom resolution of any type, it will replace that resolution. And what you can do here is if you know how to edit uh, your custom resolution to get stretch res back, all you'll want to do is go back into this file and change the resolution to the resolution that you want to achieve. And that's pretty easy um, if you know how to do it, obviously. If you guys want me to do a stretch res tutorial, let me know. I don't know if we can actually do stretch res, but I'll find a way and I'll let you guys know if you guys, you know, like this video. All right, guys. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be going to this command file right here. We're going to double click this and this is what it actually is and we're going to press control C which is a quick shortcut for copy paste or you can select it right click and press copy and once you've done that we'll press our windows key or hit the windows button and type command prompt can't spell obviously um and all you want to do is press control V at the same time, bam, right there, press enter. And then what it does is it adds the ultimate performance power scheme to our PC. So this is really important because it basically pushes our computer to the, it's, it's basically not its limits, but it's ultimate performance. So it can get more performance out of your PC. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to Windows again and type power and sleep settings or just power and go to additional power settings when we scroll down. And then we're going to go to, um, I already have it on ultimate performance, but this is usually on balance. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to um, go to the ultimate performance right here and click that. And now it is running on the ultimate performance. All right, guys, so let's get into the GPU settings. So what we'll wanna do is we'll wanna go back to our optimizations folder right above the command line file where we just were, and we'll hit optimizations, go to GPU settings, and depending on which graphics card you have, you'll want to check in the description below. Well, I'll have a link to auto installing GPU drivers. Graphics drivers are really, really important and really important how well you optimize them because it basically determines how well your graphics card is running your games that you're playing. And this basically applies for every game that you play. So if you just play Fortnite or if you play Rainbow Six, whatever you play, it will help out a ton. So click the folder that you want to use. I use an NVIDIA GeForce Experience and you want to go through these files and click them specifically and go through every single setting and optimize them correctly. Um, I'm not gonna go through this because that's gonna take a ton of time. And the same thing applies here with the AMD file. All you wanna do is go in, watch and look at the screenshots, take your time and optimize your GPU settings. All right guys, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the Fortnite 2 process folder. So this is really important because we are basically giving Fortnite priority on our PC instead of not having priority. Sometimes your Fortnite will automatically set its priority to, to low, which is not good because then your PC knows not to, you know, use its resources to run it on a faster level. So for me, this is how I'd see this. If you have a high-end PC, I'd say anything over like a Ryzen 5 3600, and let's say like a 1660 Ti or 1660, you can run Fortnite at above normal priority. So what that means is if your PC is basically one to two years old in the recent, um, in these recent years, I would use above normal priority. If it's anything older than two years, like I'd say like Ryzen, like um, first gen or like Intel, like seven series or anything like that, you'll want to use like high priority. If you know your PC is old, hit the normal priority. Trust me, this will help out a ton, especially with focusing on your PC, using its resources on your Fortnite client. 
All right, guys. So the next thing is intelligent standby list cleaner. And what we're going to want to do here is we're, we're going to want to pay attention to our total system memory. Uh, basically, we'll want to keep this on half of our total system memory. So the list size is at least going to be 1,204 um, megabytes. And the free memory, we're going to want to divide this by two. So our total number here, we're going to want 8,000, for example. You can do a little bit more specific, but for me, once I've passed that eight gigabyte threshold, I like my PC to see if it can run and clean any memory so I can use it on um, just keeping the game prioritized and keeping my applications prioritized and stuff like that. So the next thing that we're gonna do is this is the um, timer resolution. So this is what reduces input lag. You'll see other pro players use this like Tifu. Um, and basically almost all pro players use this. Um, the timer resolution, we're going to set this to 0 0.5, 0. All right, so once we've done that, all we'll do down here is ISCL polling rate. We'll take this. If you have a high-end PC, you'll want to set this to 500. And if you have a lower-end PC, just keep it at 1,000. But I would set this at 500 if you have a pretty decent PC that was built in the last year or two. Um, and then hit start, bam, minimize, and bam. It's always running in the background. This thing will really help out a ton, especially with the timer resolution thing. That really helps out an insane amount. All right, guys. So the next thing that we're going to be doing before we get into Fortnite is we're going to open up this launch option file right here. So this is a string of text that we're going to want to copy paste. But before we copy paste the file, what we'll want to do is we're going to want to open up our task manager. Why I say this is because this file right here, this number 16, needs to be changed depending on how many logical processors you have. I have 16 logical processors since I have an 8-core PC with 16 threads. Depending on your thread count, your logical processor count, you will want to change this number depending on that. So if you have an 8 um, threaded PC. So if you have four cores, eight threads, you want to change this number to eight. If you have a two core PC with four threads, you want to change this number to four. If you have a six core PC with uh, 12 threads, you want to change this to 12. If you have a 12 core PC and you have 24 threads, you want to change this to 24. And if you have a 24 core PC with 48 threads, you want to change this to 48. So depending on your threads, this is the number that you change. So I have 16. I'm going to just copy paste this. And then we're going to want to go to our Epic Games launcher. Go over here to the um, settings tab. Scroll down to Fortnite. And then go to additional command line arguments. And we're going to want to copy paste that and that's it all we do is press enter once we've done that we can go over here and launch a Fortnite. all right guys so we're back uh your game may look like this it might not be full screen and we're gonna go into the settings real quick to change that what we're gonna do is we're going to talk a little bit about situational things but mainly the best settings for competitive Fortnite. so for competitive Fortnite, you really want to have 1080p uh, it provides the best uh, crisp resolution for playing uh, and being able to see your opponents guys so i did not forget about everybody on lower end pcs um, basically if your pc was built in the last like uh, one to two years you guys are probably on 1080p resolutions and 100 percent render resolutions that's good but if your pc was basically like four four plus years old uh, you might want to change your resolution down and trust me, there will be some really good benefits to it. Um, your resolution, if you have a lower end PC and you feel like you can get more FPS, try and change it to 1600 by 900. Trust me, it'll still look really good and you'll definitely gain a lot more FPS, a lot more stable FPS and your CPU usage will go down dramatically. And if you want to get even more gains, you could go even further. And if you have a really low NPC, you can go even further down to 720p. And if you can go even lower than that, honestly, I would do it. 
But the thing is, your gameplay and your game is going to look a lot worse, obviously. So depending on your resolution of your monitor, you can get away with going like lower resolutions. Me personally, like I said, I use 1920 by 1080, but trust me, you never, you'll never regret lowering your FPS resolution down or your resolution down to 1600 by 900, especially if you're a lower on PC. And if you are still lagging, um, you can also change the 3D resolution down. You can take this down to 90 uh, to 80, 85 in between there. I find that anything underneath like 70 is super blurry, um, but go as low as possible where you feel comfortable that you can still play well. But you know, that all depends on how you feel about the 3D resolution. So definitely taking this down really dramatically helps the FPS for sure. But again, at loss of quality. Um, I'm going to go over what I think personally are the best settings. Everything is basically going to be on low uh, and show FPS is going to be on and you're going to want basically everything off except for allow multi-threaded rendering and you're going to want to use DirectX 11. DirectX 12, I find that it um, doesn't load textures properly. Uh, it uses your CPU more than it does your GPU, which is good if you have a good PC, but for some reason, even on a $3,000 PC like Booga's, uh, the textures look like you're playing mobile uh, Fortnite, so pretty bad. No cap, no cap. So anyway, always have your 3D resolution up at 100%. This provides the sharpest detail possible on your current resolution. I would recommend if you have a really like, you know, I'm talking like, you know, $1,500 plus PC to keep your uh, frame rate limit on unlimited. But if you have, you know, things in the background, you're, you're streaming uh, off the same computer or you have just general things in the background, what you want to do is you want to set this uh, FPS to the um, FPS cap of your monitor. Um, so if you have an 144 hertz monitor, you want this at 144 hertz. I would say if you have a 60 hertz monitor, and you have a pretty decent PC because I know a lot of you guys out there have pretty decent computers but kind of crappy monitors. I would uh, cap this at 120 instead of 60. You can feel a little bit of the um, latency from your monitor give a little bit. So it's a, it's a good thing to cap it at like 120. Um, if, for example, you have a really low end PC and all you can get is like, let's say like 70 FPS, but it gets some, you get some stuttering, cap it at 60 FPS, because I promise you, you really won't be able to tell the difference between 60 and 70. And this will help out your CPU, because what happens is when your graphics card uh, is allowed to be pushed, let's say you're on unlimited, so your graphics card pushes itself higher, right? And so because of that, your CPU needs to be pushed as well. And if you have a smaller, uh, not so powerful CPU, um, it's going to push your CPU to 100%. And what happens around like the 90 to 100% area is your CPU starts to um, basically get bottlenecked and, and throttled. Uh, and what happens is like a lot of the time heating issues can occur. So that's what really causes those stutters is the unlimited FPS or your FPS is capped at a too high of a ratio. So definitely always keep your FPS at your monitor's um, limit or if you have a pretty decent PC, a little bit higher than the limit. And if you have an insane PC, go for 360 or unlimited. And trust me, you'll, you'll have a more consistent uh, gameplay experience when you do this. Uh, personally, I, use, I don't use colorblind mode. I'm not colorblind, so that's what I um, <laughs> do. My brightness, I usually have it at 100%. My monitor is kind of bright, so I don't need to have it at... Um, a higher percentage but if you guys want a i guess like a brighter experience when you're playing the game definitely turn it up to whatever you like or turn it down depending on what you you vibe with um and for me i have 165 hertz monitor so i'm going to keep this at 165 um and that is about it as far as the settings go or the game um nvidia reflex low latency is pretty good if you have like a newer like um, GPU. So I'm talking like RTX um, 2060 Super and above. That would be basically the best, um, best, you know, 
best case scenario for using NVIDIA Reflex uh, low latency. So that's how I find it to be pretty good. I don't think there's anything else besides the replays thing. The record, record replays, record large theme plays, and record creative mode replays. You can have this on subjectively if you'd like it. I turn this off. Um, I don't think it really helps out a lot, as well as the NVIDIA highlights. And um, you can keep the peripheral one. That doesn't really matter. But the NVIDIA highlights one is actually really important because that can cause a lot of stuttering. Because what happens is every time you get a kill or every time you die, um, it'll like end the clip or start the clip or whatever. And it's recording. So in the background, it's using your uh, GPU and that causes stuttering because it's writing to your hard drive and it can interrupt um, the flow of the game and all that stuff. Um, realistically speaking, this is not um, like, you know, something that creative people worry about too much. Uh, really, what we're going for here is like the best FPS possible in game. Um, and you, you guys can see, I mean, I have a really good computer, so this is going to be a lot different for you guys who don't have a really good computer. Um, I'm getting like, you know, 160 plus to almost 300 FPS while playing. Um, basically 300 plus FPS while playing, which is really, really good. The thing is, for me, I like to cap my FPS. So what I'll do is I'll usually cap it at like 180. Um, and what another important thing, by the way, I didn't go over this, but if you have visual sound effects on, this lags your PC a lot, if, especially if you have a lot of um, people near you. So if you're in like end game scenario, if you're in an end game scenario, um, I should probably pop this, huh? Uh, if you're in... In an end game scenario, what's going to happen is that all of those sound alerts that are going off, uh, your your PC is being pushed a lot harder. Um, so that'll definitely, you know, impact the overall performance of your PC. Um, uh, okay. Questionable. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> All right. Well, as you guys saw, even in that build fight, I'm still getting just super consistent FPS and stuff like that. So, yeah, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Like I said, I'm live every day at Twitch TV slash Red Cloud. If you guys want to check out the links in the description, I'm definitely going to be there. And uh, yeah, guys, I hope you guys have a great day. And uh, yeah, peace out.